If you're working with geometry nodes, one of the most useful things to create geometry is the curve to mesh node. It's very useful because it's uh, effectively a sweep operation. If you've worked on other 3D software, uh, we are sweeping a curve along another curve. And that's very useful because uh, we can manipulate either curve, which gives us a lot of control over the final shape. And whether you're making stylized hair or pipes, cables, tree branches, ropes, or whatever, it's uh, really useful. But there was one pesky thing that has uh, always bothered me, and that is that if you try to make UV coordinates for it, there's always this uh, compressed region at the seam, which screws up the texture mapping. So here's how to fix it. But first, let's see why this happens. The way you create UVs for this is, you add a spline parameter node, get the factor from it, which gives us positional data along the curve uh, from the start to the end, it's going to give us 0 to 1. So when we capture this on both of our curves with a capture attribute node, and we combine them with a combine XYZ to create a vector. Here's the thing, to store that vector as a UV map, you need to add a store named attribute node on the final mesh, set it to 2D vector and face corner and give it a name. Now in the shader we can use UV mapping. And here's that ugly region. So why is that? If we look at the factor for the profile curve in that region, you can see a gradient. If we want a sharp edge, we need it to look like this. So why does this gradient appear? This factor is calculated on each point of the curve. So at the first point it's 0, at the last point it's 1, and everything in between. But when the curve is closed, it starts at some point, goes around and ends at this point. This is the last point. So to create a closed curve, Blender just connects the two endpoints. And to show this, I can just add a set spline cyclic node. You can see how the curve is. And if I check on cyclic, it just connects the two ends. So here's the thing. Points only store one number. This is zero. This is one. So that's the range of our UV from here to here. And here it's just interpolated, it's like a copy of the UV. And that's why UVs are stored on the face corner domain and not on the point domain. With points, there's only one data point here. This point can't be both 0 and 1. But with face corners, each point can have 4 data points, one for each face corner, so it could be black on this side, and white on this side. But curves don't have face corners because, well, they don't have faces. Uh, they only have points. So when this factor is transferred to the mesh, it has this gradient. So how to fix this? We're going to use a very powerful technique in my opinion, uh, and that is to create a proxy geometry inside of our node tree uh, that we can read from, but never show in the final output. So down here, I'll make another curve to mesh. The input curve is the same. Because the issue was the profile is closed, I will change this to an open curve. The easiest one is just a line. Curve line. Now we need to make sure that they have the same number of points. Let's read the number of points from our original profile with a domain size node. Set this to curve. Then let's add a resample curve to the line and add the point count to the count. And in fact this will not work, but let's go with it for now and I'll explain later why. Now we just do the capturing of the factors and we have this, which is fairly normal. 
Now we need to read the face corner data from this mesh and transfer it to the other one. To read the face corner data, we need a sample index node. Vector, face corner, we sample all indices. Then on the other mesh, we capture attribute, vector, face corner, we capture this. But it's gone wrong. The way this works is it reads, okay, face corner number one has this value, make face corner number one on this mesh the same value. But in order for this to work, we need the same number of face corners on both meshes. But because this has a closed profile, uh, it has more. With this, these edge points only have two face corners. So basically we need to add one more to our proxy line. Math node, add one, and there we go. It's like we are wrapping this line around the tube and we are fusing both ends, so they become one. So that's why we needed one more. And it works, look at that. We have a perfect seam. And this geometry here only exists within the node tree. We're just uh, reading from it. Now if we convert to mesh, we have a UV map written with whatever name you've given it. If you have multiple splines, you may want the UV islands for each one to be side by side, cause right now they are on top of each other. For that, we add to the UV vector a pack UV islands node. Set the margin between the islands, convert to mesh, and there. That's how we fix it. I hope you liked the video. See you next time.